Hi guys, it's Ghost here, and today we're playing a game called Scarlet Hollow, I believe. And it's a visual novel that's supposed to be like scary and like suspenseful, and it was just released. And it's looking really good. And they only have one episode out now, which is sad, because I feel like it's going to be a really good game. But let's just jump into it. And the, the start screen, beautiful. Like, the artwork is so freaking beautiful. References. I just want to start. Look at the little hand. Oh, my name is Ghost. Ghost. You live in the city of Yo Mama. I shouldn't say that. Let's take this serious. Um. Casp. Casper. There we are. Casper. Oh, let me. Oh, there we go. He, him, they, them, she, her, I am he, him. I am really glad that they put that in here. Oh, what is this? Face unlocked additional pass and dialogues. Keen eye, powerful build, strong athletic, pinnacle of fitness, can shotgun a root beer in three seconds. Mystical, strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in a way others cannot. Street smart. Smells be uh, bullshit, also good at bullshit. No door can hold you. Hot, attractive, charming. People want to be either with you or be you. Book smart. Send that down some. Uh, you know a lot of fun facts. Research is your favorite activity. Straight A student and keen eye. Observant, picks up on vibes, understands others' perspectives. Hmm. This one. Or can I only pick two? Yeah, I'm gonna pick these two then. Cause I'm, I'm not hot. I'm not smart. I don't have a keen eye, I'm kinda dumb. I'm not strong. <laughs> you jolt awake as the bus hits a particular, particularly nasty bump. You feel like you just managed to start drifting off. And now he, here you are, awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering you own your own late mother's rocky relationship with the side of the family. Fortunately, the end of the long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So, anyway, I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> What's like that? <laughs> he fell asleep there. No, just. <laughs> oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the uh, uh, the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not even sure he stopped when he started to doze off. At first, you thought he was being friendly, but with several hours of one-sided conversations ago. I was up in Maryland looking for the work, but mostly messing around because I was dumb teen. Oh, I love him. Me and the buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. And me and my buddies were doing our usual pranks. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, wait, what? Pushing joggers into the harbor? Yeah, you know, teen stuff. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, saying about how she's gonna call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend, and he said it hurt a lot. So I guess she really was mad, though, and just playing. And not just playing. But she kept swinging, and she got closer and closer to the edge, and soon enough, she lost her balance and fell into the harbor, all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. <laughs> we had a good laugh, but we fished her out, and her phone got soaked, so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all that day. 
You kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Thought about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real, jeez, and you even get... You ever get so mad, you're just like, I want to kill somebody? Excuse me? Excuse me? What's wrong with you? Oh yeah, all the time. I never feel that way. No, smile and pretend he didn't just say that. I feel like we should use our por perk. Stop it. Huh? Stop what? What it is you think you're doing now? You know what I'm talking about. The whole corner on a stranger on the bus and trying to make them feel uncomfortable. Act. I'm not playing along. Haha. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe I never really wanted to kill her. Even if I threatened it a bit. Uh, she... she you sure got me real mad, though. Excuse me. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on the bus to New York or something instead. I always wanted to go there. Oh, you're like a piece of shit. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, that's a smart move. Get out while you still can. Oh, seriously, what's, what's the, what the hell is wrong with you? Your girlfriend is giving birth right now. Do you think about dishing her to go have fun in New York after she tried to break up with you and you threatened to kill her? Hey now, I never threatened to kill her. You just told me you did. Okay, maybe over text, just a little. But fatherhood is scary, plus her mom is there, so it's not like she's alone. And her mom doesn't like me so much, so I'd probably just make things super stressful. She understands, she's chill. Anyways, where did you say we were headed? I'm returning to my ancestral home. Uh, just a small town. You probably never heard of it. Just a small town. You probably never heard of it before. Hmm, that's probably Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the the holler, as they call it in these parts. That's the only other stop until the bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I know almost nobody ever goes up that way, though. Actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There was a coal mine up in the holler, you see? And there was always a job listing or two on the boards around here. I never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are. Thanks, but my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard it from them in a while. Now that I think about it, I should see if they're on Facebook. Let's see how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone for once, focused on something else. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. Just change your rifles to his pack before presenting a dripping bag of peanuts. The boiled peanuts. I got them in the gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you'd use them more than me. Plus, they're dripping all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. <clears throat> Screw you and your peanuts. No thanks. You put your hands up to say no. I'm not really hungry. There's still a good 45 minutes left in the journey, pal. Assuming nothing goes wrong, best to have them on hand. <clears throat> the young man sets the penis down on the empty seat next to him. The juices dribble out through the bottom of the bag into the upholstery, instantly soaking it in peanut brine. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. Good riddance. <clears throat> Let's look at the drippy bag of peanuts. <clears throat> And just like that, you're alone. Through the stranger's penis remain on the seat, now he's gone. You don't see any need to take his soggy leftovers. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. Almost. <clears throat> the bus finally comes to a stop. It breaks squealings of the deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. <clears throat> well, the sign reads bus station, but calling it feels disingenuous at best. It's a kiosk. Though for the small town like this, you're amazed with so much as a road let alone a bus that drives it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door that's behind you and starts the engine, kicking up the dust clouds as the bus pulls away, eager to leave you in this place behind. You look like you need sleep. Am. <clears throat> hey, ghost. You instantly recognized a worn young woman from the few public photos of her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. She looks like somebody needs a hug. I'm sorry for your loss. Come here, cuz. Bring it in. 
You go in for a hug, but she has to pull away, but it's too late. You squeeze tightly, your cousin squirming in your grip. She looks upset. <clears throat> okay, okay, enough! She pulls away from you, dusting off her clothes. Something you should know about me is that I'm not really a hugger. It's never too late to learn. Yeah, never too late to learn. Never too late to learn. It is. Respect my boundary. We won't have any trouble, okay? Now, come on. Let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Cousin turns and motions you to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. Oh, don't call it dusty. Oh, rude. Everyone is so upset in this game. It doesn't take much driving before the signs of civilization are the car you're in, you are in, and the road you are on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she's focused on the road. Tip, dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and oh, like additional story paths. So choose, choose, choose. Carefully. Ooh, so much. So much. Okay. How are you holding up? How are you holding up? Fine. You don't seem fine to me. Look, I know a bluff when I see one. You don't have to hide your feelings around me. We're family, even if we just met. She sighs, particularly heavy sigh. <clears throat> Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm I'm fine. I'm really. Tabitha stares straight ahead. Her expression's tense and icy. <laughs> oh no. I guess we're both members of the dead mom club, huh? Now. Because it starts and stares at you and icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe the world this would have worked to ease the tension if she was someone else, but she isn't. She turns back to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. <laughs> I know it's just Okay. So the funeral <clears throat> is on Sunday, right? Yep. Like I told you. I don't, I don't need any help planning. Do you need any help planning? If you if you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. Just needed the coffin somebody, and somebody to dig a hole. <laughs> Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. Have we ever actually met before? I'm pretty sure this is the first time, right? Yep. You have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. I can sense a deep scar in a bloodline. I want to say that. I can sense a deep scar in a bloodline, a gaping maw intent of consuming itself to oblivion. I hope we can mend it during the time together. <laughs> Great. Good for you. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression intense and icy. Remain silent. Let us sit silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. Beep beep. That? That looks like a very unsafe house. Like... Look at that. Say unsafe. I almost said safe. Here it is. The Scarlet Estate. The old family homestead. Though it's seen better days, this crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to someone used to dingy apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before before she passed, always with an anger burning underneath her words. The faded ma majesty of once you imagine doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin, as you stare at it's perched on the crumbling cliffside. You can't help but feel like it's something that you should have left to rot a long, long time ago. He's, he looks upset. <laughs> but look at the popo! As soon as you enter, you hit with a blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here for so mu for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear the doors creak on their hinge, and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to the family humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms would be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs the floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen and hallway, I, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. <laughs> Street smart and lie. 
Oh, that would be rude to say. I thought y'all were loaded. Can't afford to fix this dump. Damn. Be smart. It's beautiful. I don't think I've ever been a building that feels as powerful as this. You're lying through your teeth, but Tapitha doesn't need to know that. In fact, not only does she not need to know that you're lying, but she won't know ever. You're a very good liar. It is. The estate was a prized jewel of this region for a long time. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture, even now. Shall we take our tour? Follow me. You put your pegs down, and you follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor. You do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I want to recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off, and if, she, if you need any food, there are fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, you can have also have access to the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wonder if you were, if I were you. Yep, so mix wash and choose carefully. Someone cleans this place? This place is nasty. It's nice. Awesome. I love peanut butter and jelly. Is there someone in town to buy food? What if I want ice cream? What's next? There's a lot of options. Thank you for nature reclaiming this. I feel wild energy in this room as the natural world is creeping in to finally reclaim its territory. Okay, geez, I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Jandy to be more thorough this week. But you should know that's only so much anyone can do with the country house that's old. It's always going to be a little grimy and worn, unlike your sleek city apartments. If a little dirt bothers you, you're going to have a rough time this week. Is there somewhere in town where I can buy food? Awesome, I love peanut butter and jelly. Awesome, I love peanut butter and jelly. How did you know it was one of my favorites? That smell can't be real. My dog is loud. For no reason. That smile cannot be real. I didn't, but you're good for you. Sorry about that. I have something to take care of. Let's continue. I didn't, but good for you. Explore. But it's on in town. Food. What if I want ice cream? Buy food. I might want to eat something other than peanut butter and jelly this week. Is there any? Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store, but. Also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online, though. I wouldn't be going with you. General store. How very folksy. But I'm your guest. Are you supposed to take care of me? I am. Hence the peanut butter and jelly fixings. They should be enough to get you through the week. What if I want ice cream? What if I want ice cream? And you can buy yourself some at the general store. If you touch my stash, I would know, and there will be consequences. You're really serious about her ice cream, huh? Alright, what's next? On the tour. Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the TV leaves the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Why aren't you a cutie patootie? Leave the cat be. You said to leave the cat be and get on with the tour. Once again, follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'd get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to not have fallen through the floors. Yes, bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom, and I'll wait outside if do what you must if you must. This is a disgusting bathroom. It is nasty. Wet should bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mysterious stains paint the floor. Are you sure the toilet works? Uh, yes, why well, wanted it. The water bill gets paid, therefore the toilet works. Now, do your business so we can move on. But it's so crusty. <laughs> you sigh in resignation. Okay. That's the spirit. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Yes. <laughs> Lift the toilet seat. You left the toilet seat. Bugs skitter from the bowl. Now, let's use it. A toilet's a toilet, sure, it should be cleaner, but your business needs to be doing, and this is a good place as any. You do what you must, and you join your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop at the tour. Follow me. You and Tapta briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest bathroom. 
The room smells old, dust, mildew, wood rot, and it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you a permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie watch them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kids to get her to do it, so be, you better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. But it seems a little dusty. See, yeah, I don't. Oh, these sound asshole ish. What an inviting room. <laughs> People have died here, haven't they? I sense a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. People have died here, haven't they? When this house is almost 150 years old, obviously people have died here. I do know how much I love cherubs, the chest is to die for. I'm surprised to see they have such a discerning taste. Every last piece of this furniture in the room is a genuine antique, handed down through the family of generations. You used to sleep here. Like I said, the house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. Now you sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Guess I'll start to get settled. I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me. I'll take you back to the forest so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you have to entertain yourselves for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Uh, some dialogue options were open additional conversation path right away and others down the line What am I supposed to do while you're gone? What am I supposed to do while you're gone? Uh, there is a very demanding job I should be getting back to right now That doesn't include figuring out activities for you to occupy your time with. I'm not your babysitter Why don't you I don't know go walk around a town or something until you get tired of historical buildings to look out so you get a great time her face her face <laughs> what kind of work do you do? I run a, I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I appreciate if you don't keep me up for long. I didn't know we owned a coal mine. We don't own the coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your mother forfeited any claim to it years ago. Can I come watch? What? No, the mines are dangerous and running it is difficult. I can't babysit you and do my job. Kind of sad. Ew. Hashtag girl boss. Oh, yep, choosing that. Damn it, I can't believe you're in the only 20s already running a coal mine. Talk about girl boss. Don't patronize me. I, I know you have nothing to your name, ghost. Any other in inane questions before I leave? Did I do something wrong? You asked me to come to this funeral, but since the moment I got here, it's been acting like I spat in your coffee. What's going on? Was it something I said? Okay, I'm sorry. I've been testy since you've gotten here. You're, you've, you've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. <clears throat> can you take me into town? Do you think you'd take me into town before you leave? No, it's just down the hill. You can work there yourself. I won't keep you. All right, I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot of needs to get done this week. Because it leads through the front door. And now it's just you and the sparkling, desperate estate. I'm going straight to the forbidden wings of the estate. I'm going to go make a peanut butter and jelly. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only thing louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. A peanut butter and jelly sounds really good. That's exactly what you need to take the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. You're back in the kitchen ready to craft the beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. You get To get started, you probably need to find some peanut butter and some jelly, bread plates, and a knife. Um, church the cabinets. The cabinets must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and oddly enough, the utensils. Grab a plate and a butter knife. Grab a plate and a butter knife. Need now some actual food. Examine the mug. It reads, I was blown away at the Blowing Rocks, North Carolina. You and your aunt, your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, but if only a few hours from this state. Maybe your route will return the trip. Your, you can route your return trip through the Blowing Rocks. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Examine the shot glass. It reads, it, sir, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perline. So this wasn't for her 50th. 
Um, a few stories here from your mom, Perlene. Wasn't the type to have cat kit she word that word friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Close to cabinet. Close to cabinet. Look back at the rest of the kitchen. Rich the fridge. As you push the fridge, you have to catch a note taped to the reading. Janie, stay out in all caps. But below, below it is silver handwriting. All the words. Okie dokie. You open the fridge and you really feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Take the mayonnaise, take the jelly, grab the ice cream. Oh, take the jelly. You reach for some, uh, one of the unopened drawers of grape jelly, carefully checking the expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief and you realize it's recent. It was either purchased specifically for you or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen tap that he actually uses. All you need now is some bread and peanut butter. Better close the fridge and keep looking. I'm not gonna dare open that takeout. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Pantry, cabinet, pantry. Tamsa sure loves her mac and cheese. Take bread. Pick up one of the non moldy loves of bread. Great. One step close to satisfying snack. Right now, to some peanut butter. Take the peanut butter. The king of nut butters. 23% of Easter has mashed up cockroaches. This is the last ingredient you need to make your peanut butter and jelly. Time to get to work. That's what's the peanut. Put the pantry door as best you can to turn back to the rest of the kitchen. I'm gonna push the kitty cat. As you push the cat, you can faintly make out the foo foo under tag. It hisses as you draw near, but it remains firmly in place. It's a killably foo foo spot on the counter. No, obviously foo foo doesn't want to be touched. Be back away from foo foo, trying to not make any sudden movements. I guess I'm not hungry anymore. No, nope. make the PB and J. Despite the state of the horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you can feed yourself. All that house around that looks less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Check out the garden. The garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago, but you don't think you want to go out there after all. But are you even up to date on your tetanus shot? That was such a Pretty garden. You pretty. You're done here. Congratulations. You've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Uh, Forbidden Wing of the Estate? The tablet are gone. There's no stopping you from it going into the Forbidden Wings of the Estate. You immediately try the nearest door only to be impeded by a lock. No longer, you're no stronger to opening a lock, but this one is difficult. You probably need to swipe a key from Tabitha to make progress into the rest of the home. That onto your room. Now that you guys have gotten you, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. You slumber back into the stairs of your room. Suitcase and toe, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand the entrance to your room. There's one eggs on the painting on the wall. This is an old relative, you very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You never heard of her, but you barely heard of anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago. So that's not really a surprise. Maybe you should ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, is actually in the mood for conversation. Please start closing the... Oh! <laughs> You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. The possum lurks within. It's quiet, but angry. <clears throat> Grab the opossum. Please get out of my dresser. You attempt to scoop the kitchen in hand, but it digs its nose into the soft bed of the dresser, resisting your touch. As you tug harder, it stiffens in your hand and begins to draw feigning death. You spook the poor thing. If this is where you might as well leave the opossum before it give it a heart attack. You should have scooped it up and tossed it. You open the top drawer next. It's empty. That's a good place you find to put your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you have been better keeping your clothes in the nice clean bag, but there's not, no going back now. Check the closet. That's creepy. I don't want that. You see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet? This must be decades of family history stacked up in here. Pick up the doll. Of course you're sharing your room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. It tags reads, Poverty of Alexandria. No need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. Look out the window. 
You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in the, its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. You'd go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve the topiaries, and do whatever you need to do to return its former glory. And once it was all done, you sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink the floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you definitely do that. Just not right now. Take a nap. You earned it. You immediately collapse onto the bed. You're tired enough that being alone is a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises from the mattress. These streets must might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. Try to settle in. But the bed is a lonely, strange place. You feel the springs pressing. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. That's enough. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do right now. Might as well head to town. Now that you settled in, there's not much left for you to do here. Except for head out and explore the town. If you have known you, you'd you wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension, though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. Continue down the path. It's really pretty out here. Continue down the path. Finally, you made it back to town. The holler, as the guy on the bus called it, had probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, the windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peeing into a grave. Hey, doggy! Oh, doggy! Gretchen, come back! Quit bothering strangers! Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. I want him! A pug! She's so cute! I love pugs. She's just so cute. Oh, look at her face! I want... Thanks, she is cute. Sure, but most of her teeth have fallen out. She's got a couple of weird growths, but for a 17 year old pug, that's pretty good. She's 17? That's gotta be really old for a dog, right? It sure is. She's about 84 in dog years. I hope she beats the current record holder and makes it 19. I'm ready at 20. The more time we get together, the better. Isn't that right, Gretch? Where are my manners? Talking to you for this song without introducing myself. I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folk. But you don't look dusty enough for that. You're in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ghost. You must be Tapitha's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of that would have come to town for the funeral. How she's holding up. To be honest, I've been a little worried about her all holed up in that big house. You say Tabby? Darkness hangs over her. Darkness hangs over her. Whatever consumes her goes beyond death of her mother and poisons her very soul. That bad, huh? She has always been a little rough around the edges, so I figured she probably just having a tough go of things, but that doesn't sound good at all. That, or you have a special way with words, Ghost. That, uh, how long have you known her? You two friends? She's really worth your time. Remain silent. You two friends? It's probably closer than most people have gotten to be able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to at least get along with everyone else. She was a great ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she was a Scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in school production of A Midsummer's Night Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might expect, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. When she graduated, and that was that. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for coffee, and there's amazing biscuits. My treat. Follow her. That looks nice. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy looks sad. This little kid looks like she would fight you. Oh, I didn't get to read that. Oh. Hi. I'm, I'm new to town. Awkward. <laughs> But so hard grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize a stranger has entered the establishment. What are you looking at? Oh. <laughs> patrons of the diner continue to stare at you, slide into a booth, doing the best to avoid their glaze. Ha, you probably made quite an impression with that deduction like that. 
Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed up a coffee. They gracefully placed a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Ah, oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. Can I have some sugar? Already taken care of. I know you like your coffee. Down, drowned in cream and sugar. I need some bacon for the little lady. Christian sets the bacon and digs in. Some question is so cute. You eat that bacon. Anything for you? Is he bacon bad for dogs? You know what, Gretchen? Gretchen looks like she don't care if bacon's bad. So we're not gonna say anything. Oh, it's just a coffee. I don't worry, but that gets you unlimited refills. Hey, can you throw in a biscuit too? Sweet, I have a cup, thanks. And you can throw in a biscuit too? I hear they're really good. Best in the country. Avery pours a fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. We have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always a reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's a weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral, too, so it'll be a special occasion. Is that like a church thing? Is the potluck a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no, the Sunday thing is co uh, coincidence, uh, coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not too many people go to the church around here, if I'm being honest. A non-religious community in the Roll South? That gotta be unusual. I know, I know, we must seem like such heathens. But there's plenty of God-fearing people in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's fine. The pastor's another story. This is something a little off about the guy. You know what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyways, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day today, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Um, I would just do what I can do to support Tabitha through this. I'm kind of assuming I'll be spending my time trying to help Tabitha, but how quickly she ran off today, I'm not sure that's enough to fill my schedule. That's really sweet of you, but you're right. That's definitely to leave you with plenty of time to kill. Have you thought about exploring the local thills, uh, trails at all? I'm usually out there a few nights a week for my job, and I'd be happy to show you around. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns with the biscuit in tow. Here's your biscuit, Winnie. Says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. You don't have to do that. No, you don't have to do that. It looks great. No worries. I hope you enjoy it. Mr. Boy, you pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from the surface. You don't even need a taste to know how this is, that it's going to be good. Divinity given buttery form. You take a bite, it melts in your mouth as if nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Whoa. Whoa is a really, this is a really good biscuit, wow. I'm so glad you like it. Every lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? Oh, <laughs> I'm Avery, no I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going around tooting your own horn, you know, I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Oh, that's rad. I never met a YouTuber before. I'd love to check out your channel at some point. Oh, thanks. It's nothing much. It pays the bills, but mostly a passion project, you know? She's selling herself short. Ghost, her stuff is amazing. She hunts cryptids. I want to do that. I want to hunt cryptids. Wait. How did you know my name? Wait, how did you know my name? Uh, sorry, is this the most people in town I know about you? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sure that must be seem creepy. The holler is a small place. Everybody knows everybody. That excludes extended family. That's a, a little unsettling. Sorry, this is all a little unsettling, knowing I've been talked about without not knowing what's been said is weird. I'm sure it is, but at least you're here now. Yeah, and everything Perlene said about you won't hold up to meaning the real you. You can always make a good first impression and wipe the slate clean with the whole town. What is she saying about me? 
I mean, look, I'm sorry I said anything. Hey, don't worry about it. Pearlene's was a gossip and should sort things out with everyone. Spreading weird little rumors of a folks was kind of her trademark. Anyways, we're, weren't we in the middle of talking about Stella's illus, illustrious YouTube career? Guess we were or weren't we? I think you're... I think the best way to start would be the river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Katawaba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of the outing at the time, but it wound up being the most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known for singing a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Katawaba River. And that's all I had to go on. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Allergies. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Set up out her phone. And a clip of something in the river. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it would be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. <laughs> I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have skipped a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was. I'm the only one who saw the thing on my own two eyes. <laughs> what if it is, you should leave it alone. I don't believe in cryptids, remain silent. No, honest to God, a cryptid there. No way that's a beaver or a dog, and there's no way a capybara would be swimming in a river in the mountains of North Carolina, unless there's some, like, North American calling the capybaras in Appalachia, but that would be still count as a cryptid, wouldn't it? Yeah, did someone catch those capybara up here, that would still count as a cryptid by most standards. My comment section went nuts for the footage, and from there it spread to Twitter pretty fast. <laughs> there was polls for days, I even had ex experts weighing in. It was all a really cool experience, and it meant the video did some pretty great numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. It's just not like any lo local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of the suit gator type situation. Uh, yeah, exactly. Some exotic pet owners set it free, and now it's forever roam the Katawaba, Katawaba, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTuber commenters for years to come. But speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if you maybe wanted to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We won't have to camp anywhere. I'm just gonna go after the... Wait! No spoilers! Oh, sorry, Avery. It's okay. I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you all around. I thought the coast is clear. I'm gonna... I'm going after Skunk Ape. Ew, stinky. Ew, stinky. That's what they say. You should be able to smell it before you see it, according to some sources. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing thrift research for the last week's video, I came across a report where the lady from town ever claimed to have seen one on her deck, playing a tug of war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided to see what's worth investigating. So what do you say? Want to tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against the darkening skies, that sort of thing. That depends. Will Gretchen be there? Because I don't want to go without Gretchen. That depends. Will Gretchen be there? Of course. That's actually been a while since I had anyone but Gretchen out there with me. Say no more. I'm in. It's going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school. So it would be kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Kanaki? Kan Kanika? Kanika. 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 And Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering, bothering salamanders. That village were terrible. We had a lot of fun, and that's all that mattered to us. No, this gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with this, get the whole game back together. So I think Anika has to close out the general store tonight. So I'm pretty sure she has a, she's a no go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we can get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. I oh, mean, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or? Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind. Oh, I was just calling to make sure you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. He's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyways, we're going out for the look for the skunk ape. We could take the easier trust if that would help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. Hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week. We can have a more low-key hang. How's that? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll bring him. 
Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He had a lot going on in the past, gosh, 10 years or so, but I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about it, Willie. I just got a little excited to think about him having having him along. He's hilarious. You'd love him. You should swing by his place sometime this week. That'd be nice. I'd love to meet your friends. Awesome. I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she is at the journal store basically every day. But friendships can wait. We got skunk ape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up to the mountains before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. He paused before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. After all, it seems everyone in town has heard awful things about you from your now deceased aunt. Don't leave a tip. You didn't even spend any money. Leave it a generous tip. You should deep pocket and pull out a crumpled $5 bill. You know it's a bit more than one would have expected to get from such a short dining experience, but you might as well share your wealth while you got it. You smoothed out the bill before placing on the table inconspicuously. Oh, that's awesome of you, Avery. We appreciate that, I'm sure. That will translate to leave the diner with you following close behind. Always tip your waitresses and waiters. Always. Always. But it's very cold when you first arrive in town, but then the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon. A chill dip descends upon the hollow. You see your situation with renewed clarity. In a new place far from civilization, the people you know following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel a sense of foreboding. This seems only natural considering where you are. Your instinct screams at you to leave, but at the same time, you're curious to see what might what the night has in store for you. You decide to go with the flow. You keep putting one foot in front of the other and not to dwell too much on the strange feeling. You gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which has always finds a way to be much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves, and see the leaves change like normal, normal sea is restarted only for a moment. So if that was a bit of a bummer. You should talk about more, something more fun like skunk apes. But... I feel like that's a good place to end. I feel like that's a good place to end. So, so that's where I'm gonna leave the story for now. I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Like it's building up to a good story, I can tell. But if you liked the video and you want a part two, let me know by liking and subscribing to the video. That would let me know that y'all actually want to see a part two of this. But other than that, y'all have a great day.